burn pattern that goes from underneath that child towards the door of the bedroom. Uh, that is caused by likely something. It's a significant burn pattern as he described it. It could have been alcohol. It could have been something else that gets consumed by the fire. But a significant burn pattern right out of control. Всем привет, это канал Фаракут. В этом видео я подобрал ужасные приговоры за не менее ужасные поступки. Попытайтесь прочувствовать эту атмосферу, когда понимаешь, что жить тебе осталось совсем немного, и вот-вот все закончится. Еще я вставил субтитры, чтобы было понятно, о чем идет речь. По области преступлений путем положения мере строго наказания более строгим окончательно назначить острых исключить тюрьмы наказания смертную казнь расстрела. Меру просечения вот нашли пеняем у Острикова до вступления правозаконных сил стоять прежде, заключили под стражу. Даже во время оглашения приговора на лице подсудимого не дрогнул ни один мускул. After everyone had their chance to speak in this Wapolo County courtroom, it was Dustin Armstrong's chance to say something about what he'd done. Do you have anything you wish to say to me prior to my announcing what I'm going to do here today, sir? No, Your Honor. Last April, police found two-year-old Braden Young unconscious in his Atomo home with a broken jaw and extensive brain damage. Armstrong admitted in Monday's hearing that he grabbed Braden's jaw and slammed his head against a wall. Being betrayed by the man I was with for nearly three years brought me into the deepest pain I've ever known. When Judge Joel Yates gave the guilty sentencing, Armstrong lost control of his emotions, dropped his head into his hands and cried. And you'll have plenty of time in the Iowa penal system to think about what you've done to this defenseless child. Tears were shed throughout the courtroom, some of joy as justice was served, others of pain as Sue Adler watches her son leave for prison. Can't see Mr. Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury was going to feature jury service. I'm going to meet you in the jury room. All right.
recess for 15 minutes. Today, in L.A. Superior Court, Spencer begged for mercy from Judge Edmund Clark, Jr. before sentencing. I'm sorry for what happened here. I'm just like, please do life in prison. And I'm not a bad person, but I made a mistake. But I'm not just some gangbanger that she tried to betray me as. During sentencing, Spencer completely broke down. The minimum period of parole eligibility is 15 years plus 25 years of life in accordance with Penal Code Section 12022.53d. This is to be concurrent with the school term. Now, with more security, do students feel safer? I definitely do feel safe, especially since, like, after 9 p.m., they have, you have to show your ID and everything. I mean, I wasn't here to witness the shooting because I'm just a freshman, but, um, I don't know, I've never felt unsafe here. I feel very safe. I've actually been here on campus. This is my 34th year. It's an incredibly emotional day in court. When the judge handed down that sentence to Jalil Smith Riley, he became very emotional, even collapsing at one point. But the families of those victims tell us this is way too little, too late. Four defendants serve a term of life without parole. As to count four, for the offense of attempted murder. This reaction from a confessed killer was the last in a series of intense moments in this Hamilton County courtroom and exactly what the victim's families asked for. I have to deal with life without portion, so he should deal with life without, without parole. With his request to withdraw his guilty plea denied and death penalty off the table, the families of Portia Brooks and Aaron Martin pleaded with Judge Charles Kubicki to hand down the maximum sentence. Smith Riley's family begged for a shorter one. With no criminal record outside of that night, they believed he had the capacity to be rehabilitated. In case 562027, that the defendant shall serve a term of three years, years which is the minimum, on count one of that. As to count two in that case, felonious assault, a felony of the second degree, it is ordered that the defendant shall serve a term of two years in prison on that count. As to count three of that case, the robbery, which is also a felony of the second degree, the court uh, orders that the defendant shall serve a term of two years on that oh, count as well. We think so. At his sentencing today, 19 year old Shondell Jackson was facing a mandatory life term for pulling the trigger, but hoped for a chance at parole. A hope dashed by Judge Rebecca Dallet, who gave him life without parole, sparking the outburst. It all started when Jackson turned towards the Potter family, something deputies were watching for. At the sentencing today, prosecutors played this 12 News video of Jackson's February conviction, when Jackson gestured to the Potter family several times, cursed at them, and as he was let out of court, our camera caught him smiling at the victim's family. We see how evil Shotgun is in court, looking at us, swearing at us, and smiling. The judge said Jackson's past behavior in court influenced his getting the maximum sentence. The severity of the blow to that child's leg and to say that you did not recognize what had been done, to ignore what must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child on a daily basis is more than disconcerting to this court. And as such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections 